How you doing? Pretty good. Are we coming in? Can you hear us clearly? What's up, Forrest? You're perfect. How are you guys today? Pretty good. Pretty yeah, good. Right Pretty on. Good hey, I'd like to start with a super serious question. Yeah, shoot. Hey, Let's do it. Best beer, Frankenmuth or Nashville? Who's got the best? Mm. Uh, Nashville bearded iris is the best. Really? Yeah. And I, 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 I there's this, they do a juicy IPA that is in, uh, uh, out of this world. If you haven't tried it, you should definitely try it. It's it's worth your time. Tiny bomb. It'd be worth, Tiny bomb it'd be worth your time to get on an airplane <laughs> and, and, and go out of your way to, to get this beer. I would say that uh, as far as the German style beers go, Frankenmuth has kind of got it in the can. Are you uh, are you suggesting just like a Hefeweizen? Hefeweizen, I think, is a good example. Yeah. I suppose that's how's, so how has the move to Nashville been for you guys? Did you guys buy a cabin, or have you just been like recording and hanging out at a cabin when you need to? We like to hang it around. I mean, in and out of cabins in various locations. We so get bored. Like, we do get bored. We just constantly need the 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 momentum and the change of scenery. I think that's healthy for the creative process. But yeah, no, we've got we all kind of living in separate locations, kind of spread across uh, more East Nashville, and then so yeah, and it's been kind of a very natural move. It feels pretty organic, just being in and out of Nashville so so much so much in the last three years, and we yeah. recorded. And the Peaceful Army in Nashville. It's just sort of feels like home away from home. And we kind of grew up coming here in the summers and camping. Our grandparents lived here. So so was the battle at Gardens Gate recorded all in Nashville? Is that where the whole thing was done? No, it was recorded all in Los Angeles. Very different. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it was yeah. written all over the place. Oh, yeah, yeah that's right. Because like you guys bumped into like Elon Musk and a couple of people were around. Yeah, lots of different characters in 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 and out of yeah Henson the, the studio um, La Brea that we recorded the album pretty much entirely there, pretty much, um, yeah. But um, crazy energy there, crazy anything energy. can happen. It's really quite yeah, and it did. It's 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 the <laughs> Holly, it's the Hollywood you know Los Angeles that you you, you know of and. And, yeah, you know, anyway, it's it's fun in doses. Very yeah. very stimulating. Good in doses. Yeah. Well, how about like back in 2018? What does Greta Van Fleet talk to Justin Bieber about at Coachella? Like, what do you guys? <laughs> what do you discuss? Um. Well, first he talked to Daniel. Uh, he watched our set at Coachella, and uh, he wanted to talk to Daniel because Justin is also really into drums. I think that's what he was doing first. We need a break for the tequila train. Yeah, part of the train. <laughs> was, uh, yeah, we're, we're here at the management office, and they decided this is a good location. Or actually, yeah, we. Th this is just a brothel that we're staying on along the way. <laughs> well, you weren't supposed to tell them that, but we now, have our we have a bag now, attached now to a stick that we throw over. Now our everybody knows, right? Well, we're riding the blinds for a while. Oh, we're gonna catch yeah. the train. Um, that's what we're doing. Anyway, for us. yeah. What were you saying? Oh yeah. So, so he, he talked to Danny about the drums. He's kind of into that drums. And yeah, yeah. And, and then uh, Daniel was hot as all hell, and probably all of our lungs were filled with sand. Oh yeah. yeah. So Daniel had to go into the air conditioned uh, tent, and uh, I stopped in and said hi. And I actually I had some curiosities about about his life, and I said Justin. So like, at what point? Because I knew, I know he's a young guy too. I'm like, at what point did you decide to, that you would like settle down? and like buy a house and he looks at me and says oh i didn't i haven't bought a house i still rent <laughs> like that's that's smart. i'm like oh yeah that <laughs> okay. answers your question <laughs> yeah do you guys think that you get a better reception opening up for justin bieber or metallica because i know you had that metallica tour planned and while you guys get played on the same stations i imagine you can play different crowds at metallica camp does that make sense? Like That's you're in the a, genre and you've kind of been lumped in with those bands, but at the same time, you guys have a different style. I could see you actually opening it up for somebody like Bieber where Metallica and those two wouldn't work together. Do you agree or do you think that'd be a tough sell? I understand where you're coming from. And I think that if there is a rock and roll band that could open up for a big mainstream pop artist, it would probably be Greta Van Fleet. Yeah, I think we could probably pull that off uh yeah i but I, I agree with you in that i don't think it would translate if we were perhaps i mean yeah it doesn't it doesn't go both ways i mean you've got i mean metallica and and 
you know, an artist like Justin Bieber, that's very, yeah. very different. And I suppose we could play to both of those crowds, but I, I don't think that a, a band like Metallica could open up for Justin Bieber, or a band like Justin Bieber or an artist like Justin Bieber could open up for Metallica. So sure. it was a strange sort of conclusion. That'd be weird. I guess that's the cool thing about music festivals is you get all of it for better yeah. or for worse. Yeah. Right? yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So the new album, I've noticed that each song kind of has like its own different like logo. What, where did they come from? Are they pre-existing logos? Did you guys create those? And how did you decide which one goes with which song? It took us a bit, but we created those. Um, and, and they're kind of symbols, you know, and they kind of act as a, a hieroglyphic or sort of, it's just sort of, a, I think, um, a piece of uh, like an aesthetic of, of that universe that, yeah. that we kind of done some world building on this album. So, uh, yeah, I think that there's something kind of primeval about that. And there's, of course, something ancient about it as well. But there's something very modern, almost alien-esque about yeah. it. So, um, yeah. And we thought that it, it really did give each individual song breadth and, and a meaning and that it, it would allow each track to to have a certain um, special impact. Because that's how we kind of put the album together. Uh, we ge we generally like to put albums like uh, together like that, where each song is a piece of the overall puzzle, and, and without every track, it's not it's not whole necessarily. Yeah, yeah. giving every single track its uh, its due diligence. I mean, logos are logo symbols, whatever you want to call them, very important to the human, the soul, and the brain. We use them every day. Yeah, it's just everybody kind of, uses we them. Thought we'd put together a little bit more of a language or a higher context, you know, uh, visual. Yeah. Sam, are you playing more like B3 organ and piano on this album? I feel like I'm hearing it more. And I don't know if there's more of it in there or maybe it's just kind of as the sound of the band expanded a little bit, but I, I noticed it a lot more. Maybe that has to do with the videos you guys have done or being on Kimmel. I see you more behind that. Is that way more? That's... Yeah. Yeah, um, I also think that it comes out of the necessity of sonic painting to be able to uh, cre create an environment through sound. And through Anthem of the Peaceful Army, there were some, there were some keyboard parts, some kind of more lead keyboard parts, but it wasn't anything substantial. So yeah, the Garden's Gate uh, really was asking for it. It was really asking for... Uh, a lot of instrumentation, uh, especially employing the uh, the Mellotron a lot too, yeah. uh, and using these old tapes and creating this space. And yeah, with the B three and and piano as well, acoustic piano. And Josh, I'm sure it changes from song to song, but a song like Barbarians, which I like a lot, it's real bluesy, it's kind of funky. When do you put down your vocals? Let's say a specific song like Barbarians. Does the band come with like, hey, here's the song? I've heard of some artists and it's always blown my mind. They get a completed song and then fill in the vocals, but I know all you guys write. So let's just talk about barbarians. How do you get your vocals into that song or how did that song come together? Yeah. Yeah. We'll kind of build out parts and start formatting the track and make suggestions and everybody kind of uh, does their, their thing or has their part uh, in that process. And then really what I've got is a vocal melody by the end of that process. And that has some kind of implication on the instrumentation as well. And that, that might change, change with the vocals, but then I, I'll, I'll write lyrics sort of last and then uh, go into the vocal booth. Sometimes I'm writing the lyrics before I go in and record it that day, you know, but um, yeah, that's kind of generally the process, but it's, it's inside of that. So many things change, but um, yeah, I think sometimes it is sort of more of the formulated uh, or finished song instrumentally, and then I put vocals on it. Or sometimes it's like during that process. But uh, I, I feel pretty pretty comfortable just being able to be in the room while we're putting the song together and, and make sure that, you know, I've got my say. So yeah. How about the, the video for Age of Machine? Uh, looks like you guys are having fun. Were you actually riding those motorcycles, right? It didn't look like stunt or blue screen or green screen or anything like that yeah those were those were electric our uh, uh, yeah we were riding those around hollywood our <laughs> mantra for, our mantra uh, as far as we've been making these videos for this for this album has been practical effects. practical effects that's right that's yeah. very important for good yeah. cinema practical yeah. effects so it's, and it's method unreal. method is also great that's, that's something to be as uh as the, the bands progress and you guys have gotten more and more like recognition and say fame, 
I'd imagine dating when you're in a popular band has got to become more challenging. Um, what makes it really hard? Like there's things that I would assume uh, either a person being really into your band, but at the same time, someone having no idea who you are at all might be good, might be bad. Like what's uh, what makes being in a band hard in the dating world? I'm pretty sure there, there are apps for this. Yeah, they make apps. You can't, you can't be on Tinder, though. You can't be like, that's the dude from Greta Van Fleet. No, they make fancy ones for rich people. <laughs> that's right, right. Exactly. With, um, with, I, with fake teeth. I think it's, I think it's probably face lips. most you ideal to, to, like, meet, to like, meet someone that has no idea or doesn't care. Yeah, it really is that. It's just finding somebody who, who doesn't know you for your work but kind of knows you as you. Um, yeah. And that's kind of the trick, you know, and that is a, that's a really good question because it is intriguing and it's, in, you know, it's like sort of really a matter of, 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 of considering the fact that, you know, this person may be interested in me because of what I do for a living. Yeah. Or who I, you know, That'd be but, tough. So, yeah, that, that's, that's a good way tough. to ask that question. Yeah. So the battle at Gardens Gate, last question. I get the impression that these songs really take their time. And, you know, they'll say for like a sophomore album, people kind of hurry through the songs and as fans, we can hear that. This is clearly not your sophomore album. I know some people are referring to it as that. I never saw it that way, of course, with the EPs and other work that you guys have done. But it sounds like these songs are really flushed out. Did you have more time to work on the songs or is that just how the band works? Does that make sense? Because sometimes I'll hear a band, uh, a further release. And I'm like, man, it sounds like, oh, there's the hook. There's the chorus. Wrap it up. Not just about length. But like your songs are, they each have an identity and it feels to me like they're done the way you wanted them. Yeah, I think that's what took so long uh, is relative perfection in, in our eyes and the creator's eyes. So, yes, every single song does have its own personality and does have its own unique spot in the story. And uh, I think this whole process, we've just been expanding on that and giving each song what it needs to live its kind of own life within this bigger, this bigger uh, narrative. Yep. I think that's, yeah, that's pretty cool. Also, um, as far sorry. as writing goes, delving into what the song is asking for. I think we gave ourselves a little bit more studio time um, on this particular album. Uh, we didn't, the last album, we didn't really have much, studio time but again it was still trying to find the time to actually just be able to record in between sort of touring and, and being busy in that in that sense so um yeah i think we we kind of cemented some like two chunks of uh of uh, time over the course of the summer and of 2019 and we're pretty much finished with the with the album before 2020 and then of course we were able to add an extra two tracks uh, to make a 12 song album, which we wanted to do, but with touring in 2020, we were only going to have time to record 10. Right. So yeah, there's a bit of the silver lining there. Um, yeah. So how many songs didn't make it? I know it's too early to talk about a new album, but I've heard you guys talk before about you came in, some of the songs are a little bit older, you brought them back out, worked through them again. So what songs did you start? And you're like, that's not our sound or this isn't ready or, um, what do you have, I guess, in the can to work on? There was a couple of tracks that didn't make the album just because we didn't think they fit the sonic aesthetic of this particular, you know, piece. But we tried them, and I think they're good songs, and we probably will incorporate them down the road, perhaps. But you know, we've we've got, and I don't, I don't think we'll ever write something and go, ah, that's not really us. You know, that doesn't seem to happen. But um, yeah, there were there was a few few tracks that that we like we tried. And I think they're going to fit really well on other albums. Well, it's really good, guys. I like the new album. It's got its own sound. And again, I hope that makes sense. Like you took your time and uh, I think a band like Tool or Pink Floyd, you hear the song, you're like, that song's perfect. It's done. So I appreciate it. Uh, Josh, Sam, Greta Van Fleet, new album out now. Thank you so much for chatting today. Yep. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, guys.